So, you guys all ready for school to be out? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, because we're, we're making a new holiday. Oh, what there's, is it? There's there's um, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and then there's Children's Day. Oh, really? <laughs> every morning, obviously, we have the regulars, which is awesome. We probably have five or six different groups that come in every day. And then we have a lot of travelies. We're kind of destination for travelers from Canada to Oregon. Uh, we got customers that have stopped by, and they're from eastern co the East Coast. I mean, we love living here because of the uh, you know, the, all the opportunities to go hiking and, and snowshoeing. I like the rural aspect of it. We run, oh, between 40 and 50 cow-calf pairs. We raise some bulls, and my daughter shows 4-H. It's just a good group of people here. It's a good community. It's just like a big family. It's kind of like, you know, the TV stuff. I mean, Friday nights during football season, most of the town is at the school watching the football game, cheering on the, the Warriors and stuff. I consider neighbors a mile and a half away. Where, you know, in Gig Harbor in the suburbs, I didn't know people that well two houses down. It's a closeness. Even though you're spread out more, there's a lot more closeness here. Is this tomorrow's paper? Yeah. Oh, you're working on Saturday's paper already. I'm just putting that in. Yeah, okay, I won't worry about that then. But I like that shot so much better. Yeah, me too. That's, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'd been on vacation. I just got back into town. My editor called me and she said, uh, I think I, I need to send you up to the upper county. There's, there's a fire going on up there. I said, yeah, I'll go check it out. And I jumped in the car and headed up that way. And as I got on to I-90 headed, headed north, I could see the plume of smoke. And I called her immediately and I said, uh, this is the big one. You know, you don't, you don't have an inkling of what's going on. And I go outside, I'm clear in Ellensburg and there's this huge plume of smoke. It's just unreal. It was such a hot day that instantly we knew it was gonna be a scary fire because the wind was just howling. Source of the fire is about a mile upwind of us. So we knew we were gonna, we're, we're gonna receive some of whatever's coming. There was multiple fires going on in like District 7's area. Pager went off and uh, then the call came out for what turned out to be Taylor Bridge. We pulled in and with the winds racing it up there, it just came right up over the top, went up the bank above us and it was, there was nothing anybody could do. There's this peak time of the year where everything is, is dry, it's ready to go. If you drop a match, it's going to be a fire. The fire was moving about 30 miles an hour Average flame lengths when it wasn't gusting was um, three to four feet, and then it would gust, and then it would go to 20 feet. And so, you know, the, the fire would literally blow over the road. I mean, just like a sheet of flame. Once the fire started to accelerate, uh, I just, I knew houses were being lost. The wind was strong enough that, like when the old homestead house burned, that's a half a mile away, and there was embers landing in the vicinity here. So we were definitely on patrol and we had hoses just trying to keep everything wet. We'd see the helicopters. Um, there were some ponds down in that area and they were dipping water buckets and we couldn't see where they were dumping them, but they were like six of them going back and forth and back and forth all day long. It was just like a war zone in here. You had the eerie quiet from so many people being evacuated. And then you had, you know, the war on the fire going on. You had helicopters and DC-10s and firefighters just you know, staging and going back and forth. At that point, I was listening to the scanner and getting phone calls from reporters and people that were getting other phone calls about where things were happening. And I was just following the story as fast as I could. I came upon this, this lady trying to rescue her neighbor's horses. Um, she'd evacuated her own and she heard that her neighbors had, had horses down the road and she went in with her trailer to, to get them out. At that moment, it was pretty intense. I don't even know what I was thinking. I had come home here first and pulled in the driveway and we were met by the emergency people and they said, 10 minutes, get out. My daughter was in the other field trying to gather horses. The fire was so close, you could feel the heat from it. You could feel the bugs trying to outrun the fire. They were getting bombarded by them. And then you could feel the ash and it, it was scary. I was scared for her safety. I was telling her to, if I said so, get out and don't, don't wait for me. And 
that's pretty tough. I mean, that's your kid, and that's, you know, that's scary. There was kind of an emotional roller coaster because you'd, you'd see this big plume go up. You know it was somebody's house, and so you're sitting there, and you're, you're thinking, well, that's not quite our area, but that's got to be the trees that are out there that went up. And then you see a plume that's closer, and you go, I know that's ours, and it's just mind-boggling. It's an experience that's really hard to describe, just being emotionally, like, leveled by it. There's a lot of people that even to this day cannot talk about that fire without tears in their eyes. It was devastating. They lost their whole identity in, you know, a minute. What surprised me most was, was how little time you have to prepare. In my mind, the fire was always starting somewhere further away, <laughs> and you had time to get your act together. If I had a message, it would be um, not being naive about where you're living and the environment that you're living in. We are very aware of fire. It's a, it's a very known presence. This is well after the fact. I'd driven through a neighborhood that looked like a moonscape. Every, it was just ashes and cinders everywhere. And just one burnt down house after another. And I'd driven up over a ridge top and I was coming down into a small valley. And as I cleared the top of the ridge, I looked off in the distance and everything was black, except for this, this one house that had this beautiful manicured lawn that was still pristine and green all around it. And it, it was funny because as soon as I saw that, I said, like, oh, that's what Firewise looks like. Since Taylor Bridge Fire, it has been a big thing. You'll notice driving through here, the trees are limbed and yards are greener and... Making it easy to fight a fire and making it easy for a fire to go around you. That's, those are the two issues when you're thinking about protecting your own home. You just gotta peck away at it every day. Just have a little plan, take a section and do a section at a time. And then someday, it looks halfway decent. <laughs> if you are taking care of your house and your property and, and some of the trees within 100 or 200 feet of the next home, you're making it easier for that next person to save their house and the next house down the line and the next house down the line. It's a sense of responsibility to the other people that are close by and the community as a whole.